Hopefully I can pick up these uh, this ammo that's over here. Oh, I didn't get hurt, so that's good. He wants to play, though. We'll play here in a second, little guy. Let me pick up this ammo real quick. What's up everybody? Badass Games. Welcome back to Angel of Darkness. If you haven't played this game, then you might be wondering why I'm playing as this guy and who the heck is he? Well, his name is Curtis Trent and you're going to play with him for a couple of levels. Uh, he has very similar mobility to Lara Croft. He can, you know, roll and everything, but he's kind of, you know, he's got different animations and everything, so a little bit slower. He was supposed to have some pretty awesome abilities, but they failed to put them into the game before they released it. So he's actually quite uh, less powerful than Lara, you know, regardless of what we've seen in the cutscenes. So um, he doesn't have much with him. If we check the weapons, he only has a Baronet or a Boron X that he's created himself, and it's only a prototype too, but it's actually a very powerful weapon. So he made his own gun, which is kind of funny because we're finding ammunition laying around this whole sanitarium area for his own gun. So that's pretty interesting. Now, um, a couple of other things I want to mention about this guy. Let's check his uh, items. He only has a shard. He does not have any med pack, so make sure that you keep that in mind when you're playing as him. You can't refill your health until you find a med pack. There is one in this level. There's a couple of health items in this level, actually. A couple of other things I'd like to mention before we get started here is that he can't sprint. He doesn't have the sprint ability. Another thing he can't do is he cannot commando crawl. He can only crouch and uh, do this stuff like this. So, um, he was, like I said before, he's supposed to have a whole plethora of awesome moves that makes him more powerful and more awesome than Lara Croft, but they ended up not putting that into the game, and instead we only get special abilities during cutscenes or when we need them for puzzles or something, so it's kind of lame. Yeah, so, ha. <laughs> Alright, Curtis Trent, let's begin our trip through the sanitarium. You might need to join this place after we're done here. Alright, well, I was gonna grab the ledge and fall off safely, but instead I walked off. So, let's pick up this other thing of ammo right here, and now we're gonna hop over to this ladder right here. Now, there's no other items in this, you know, on these levels that I'm going through. I'm basically gonna pick up all the items in the, as I go down. There's only three total items in this area. Those two clips, and then there's a health pills that we're gonna get here in a little bit. Alright, so climb on down. We gotta go a little bit further down. We don't have to go all the way down, fortunately. We don't have to go... But, when you get down the ladder, you want to turn, and um, you might want to think about doing a running jump here. Well, the thing with Curtis is that his running and jumping ability isn't really that good. Like, if you try to step back from the ledge, you try to run and jump, he's going to fall straight to his death. So, uh, I recommend not trying to do a run and jump, just do a standing jump. He actually has pretty good distance for that purpose. Now, he dangles a lot. I'm actually holding up right now, and he's not pulling himself up. But as soon as he's ready, he will pull himself up. So, he's a little bit slower, a little bit more stiff than Laura, but... Uh, it's still not, I mean, it's just not bad if you were to say, if, like, this was the only game you've ever played, you'd be like, well, I guess these controls aren't bad. Alright, health pills right there, let's go ahead and go down to the bottom here. And now, this time, all of the rails are intact, so we have to go through this little elevator thing. Little central circle, which happens to be an elevator, I'm assuming. And open this hatch to fall into the elevator. Awesome, and now we'll come out to the left, we'll find this ladder, and we're going to go down these two ladders right here, <coughs> and turn to the left to find that ledge right there, and this is the last ledge that we need to get to. Wait for him to stop dangling, and then uh, pull yourself up. Cool. Let's go into the next area. This door right here is going to take us into the actual sanitarium. Alright, let's open this door in front of us. In fact, heal this crazy guy going all nuts all over the place is, uh, actually it's not a crazy guy, crazy nuts guy. He's just a crazy guy. He's an Atlantean wannabe. But he'll actually open the door too. He will attack you, so be mindful of that. Now there are a couple of these guys that won't attack you. Let's watch this cutscene. I thought this would be one of my easy days. Right, let's grab this clip that was uh, I was trying to grab before before we got interrupted. Let's go in here. Now, uh, like I was trying to tell you, these guys, not all of them need to be killed. This guy right here actually uh, 
at least in my game, he doesn't seem to be very hostile. So I'll go ahead and leave him be because I really want to save the ammunition. All right, let's go up here and we find this touchpad. Now, we can't activate it because we don't have the code, but if we stand here and activate the door... My Farsi ability will help here. Alright, Curtis Trent is able to see the code to get through the door, so memorize that, and then type that into the code whenever we get... Actually, you don't need to memorize it. It'll tell you here, and you'll have it in your inventory. I'll show you that stuff here as soon as we get done here. So as you can see, we don't have direct control over his far as the ability. If you look in the upper right-hand corner, we have our code, 06289. Now, what's up, guy? Uh, I won't mess with you. Uh, let's check our inventory real quick because it will... Oh, I think he's getting mad at me now, but... 06289. Look at that little cool graphic they got going on there. Uh, let's type that into the thing. Oh, well, I didn't mean to kick you, man. You need to go away if I'm going to try to activate this. There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. 06289. And now we have our access. Cool, and there's another crazy guy right here. Um, now, you're going to want to take him out because he is hostile. I'm going to tell you a little bit about these guys. Shooting them from a distance, it takes about 11 shots. When they're up close, it takes about 4 shots. I've actually been able to off one in about 3. So keep that in mind when you're playing your game. You want to try to uh, save as much ammo as you possibly can because he really doesn't have very much. So try to get point blank with these guys to waste them. and um, Or just ignore them. That's still cool too. Four shots should do it, though, if you're really close. All right, let's go into this next area. This happens to be, like, some dining hall area. Take your gun out, because there's going to be a couple more crazy guys. Uh, he looks like he's going to run away, so I won't waste any more ammo on him. Oh, this guy definitely wants to play, though. Three shots, it looked like that one. did. I actually shot four off, though. All right, chocolate bar in this room. This happens to be one of the only rooms that have an item in it in this area, so... Over here to the left, as you go down this little passageway, you're going to find that dining area, that main dining area that I was mentioning. You also see this guy right here in orange. Now, he's not hostile either compared to the other guys. But if you are trying to off all these guys, then there is one over here too. Uh, just looking at the wall, I'm surprised. Usually he's going all over the place. Two shots. Wow, that's the first time I've been able to do it in two shots. Of course, I did fire an extra one. All right, now in this dining area, there's a couple of pickups. You don't necessarily need to pick them up now because we will be coming back here very, very shortly. But we have Boron X ammo and a chocolate bar. And another crazy guy. Okay, now let's go down this hallway. Same way we were going. Um, there were a couple of doors that I couldn't get into. One of them requires an access key, and one of them has a number outside of the door. I'll go back and I'll show you that as soon as we get done going through this room right here when we need to go. Alright, there's no enemies in here, and there's only uh, one pickup for your ammo, and there's also another pickup for that card swipe that I was mentioning just a second ago. Thanks, Doc. Looks like you had a bad day. I'm not sure how many, pr how many of these guys they have floating around here, but there's another one. Cool, we got the card. Let's go and use the card. Now, before I go use the card, before you go use the card, you're going to want to take a pit stop and you're going to look at something here real quick, okay? You're going to find this door right here that has a number outside of it, 38471. You need to memorize that number because that's the code to open this door. We need to go in there eventually. And so, in order to open that door, the correct way is to go this direction. And use that card swipe on this door here in the dining room. They really wanted to protect their chefs, apparently. Why did a scientist have a key pass to the kitchen area? I don't understand. Now there is a crazy guy in here, so let's off him real quick. 
put him out of his misery. He is hostile, so... We will be coming back down here. I kind of want to get rid of him, so I want to deal with him. Now let's climb these stairs. This is going to take us up to that control panel I was mentioning before. When you get to the top, head to the right, there's going to be a large med pack on the ground. We'll pick that up. And now, let's head over here along this upper area to this control panel. Now remember that number, okay, because we're going to need to put it in here right now. 38471. You should get the, uh, firm, uh, the affirmation beep, and the door will open, allowing you access to the next section. Alright, so let's go down here. This is where we need to go. Ah, it took a little damage. That's fine. Shouldn't matter too much. And there's our open door. Well, that doctor bit it. We're going to be going in that room here in a second, too. So, yeah, we're going to have fun, I suppose. All right, a crazy hostile guy. It's off him. We got this grate right here that's going to let us get access to that room. And this ventilation shaft. Drop the grate. Let's take our sweet time, Curtis. His animations for crouching are actually pretty annoying, I'll, I'll admit. Uh, just be patient. He will eventually stand up. And you're able to do what you need to do there, so. Alright, now we're going back into that... Now we're finally into that room where we just had that cutscene. But the problem is I don't see any blood, I don't see any body, I don't see the, uh... The proto... I don't know what the heck happened here, but... Looks like, uh, maybe that doctor survived? I don't know. We will never know. Alright, back here in this room, there's nothing else in this room at all. There's another grate that you can go into. And also, the, another I think another crazy guy spawned in the hallway that I was in previous to this. So if you need the kill, then go out there and kill that guy. <clears throat> Alright, some more ventilation reversing. They seem to be avoiding Curtis, so I'm not sure what's up with that. Alright, here's another ammo thing for us. Now we need what we need to do is we need to get up this ladder, but the thing is it's broken. They're not gonna let you get up there easily. But they have these canisters standing here next to the fan and next to that ladder, coincidentally, that will blow up and give you access to the switch that you need to get access to. Now it's kinda hard to hit that thing. I've actually just kinda moved around the room. I've had I, that's worked out for me pretty well, but there have been times where I just stood there and I wasn't able to actually shoot the thing for some reason. Alright, so this switch is gonna stop that fan. And crouch and go through this fan. It's 
Sorry about your luck, guy. I want to stand up. Oh, I'm not. Alright, here is the ventilation. There's nothing else in this area. Yeah, this is sort of lackluster. I mean, there's really not a whole lot of stuff to do here. Except just traverse ventilation. Okay, if we turn to the left, that's going to take us basically back into the hallway that we were before, except that there's a door between us and that hallway that we couldn't open. Still can't. But we want to head down into this direction, and this is going to take us to the maximum... And here we are in the maximum containment area, and we're getting this little flyby. Let's see what the heck's going on here. Looks familiar. Looks like the other place we were just at. So, um... Yeah, more sanitarium stuff, okay. Alright, so if you continue down through this hallway, there's really not much around here. Got a couple closed doors. We also have this gate. And, uh, yeah, in this room, you have this extra pit hallway going this direction, and you got this pit. Don't fall in the pit, it's instant death. Jump over the pit and pick up the ammo on the other side for your weapon. And then let's make our way back across. Uh, if you can't seem to make that jump, you can jump and grab this wire on the wall and shimmy to the left. Make sure that you're positioned all the way to the left, uh, sidestepping to the left before you jump and grab this thing. Because um, he does, he barely has just enough to make it across. So uh, There's that. Okay, and we also have this door we can open to the control room. We're not going to go in there just yet because you can go in there if you know the code. You can go in there and put the code in if you want, but I'm going to go and uh, pretend I don't know the code. We're going to get that real quick. Not like you don't get it if you... Um, put the code in first, you actually get it also, but, um, yeah, we're just gonna do it this way. Okay, so we got a couple of closed doors here. Over here is a door with a swipe card. We do not have the swipe card yet, and that's basically our goal is to get that swipe card. Um, there's also a couple rooms you can go in to spawn some enemies. I'll do that in a little bit, but I'm gonna go over here to this door right here. As you approach it, we get a cutscene, and then he's gonna use his farsight ability once again. So now we have the code 17068. If you didn't see the code on the guy, then it's up there in the upper right hand corner, or you can go into your inventory and check it this way. And there it is 17068. All right, so that's the code to open this door over here. So let's go and uh, open this uh, door. Actually, we're going to open the, we're not going to open these doors. We're going to open the doors we just were at. So. Put the code in here, this is where it goes. 17068. Okay, we get the affirmation, and we also see the two doors that didn't really seem like it did anything, but those doors are now unlocked and we can open them. So let's go do some of that stuff. Uh, behind one of the doors, there's gonna be a bunch of stuff, so we're gonna we gotta go in there and grab all that stuff. By coming over in this direction, you can open that door, but I, uh, there's nothing in there. It's just a padded room with a dead guy. A dead crazy guy. And inside of this room, we have... Oh, kind of... Can't move. Something's up. There we go. Here we go. Grab some cards. We need that. That is the straw hub, or I'm sorry, the sanatorium. Let's take a look at the name real quick before I get it wrong. Sanitarium low access pass, okay? So make sure you grab that. He that guy also had a clip, and there's also a chocolate bar on the desk, but be careful because you spawned um, a crazy guy that has some claws, and uh, he uh, will not hesitate to use those on you. Now, these guys are much tougher than their regular counterparts, okay? He takes around roughly 10 shots to off one, so yeah, if you want to drop one, make sure that you're willing to spend the um, ammunition to do so. Okay, so we got the card key. I just kind of went in that room for no apparent reason. Swipe the key here on this door. It's going to open this door to my left. And if you would have explored, you would have seen another door similar to it uh, around in this hallway right here. That We could, we are actually in this hallway before. Uh, or you could have come through here. There's a doorway right here that if you go into, uh, there's nothing in here except that it spawns two of those clawed crazy guys. Kind of want to tear your heart out of your chest, but we're not going to let him. We're going to unload our foreign onto him. Now, remember, you can change target by pressing the circle button, so I recommend choosing the one that's closest to you before he uh, gets any claws into you. If you do a steady shot, then they flinch too much to attack you, which is good. 
Okay, now that we've done that, let's go into this room right here because there is a clip on this bag right here. Grab it real quick. And then let's leave through this door right over here. And we're going to go into another large area, like a morgue area, I suppose. Okay, so across the way you see a guard in the ventilation shaft. That's actually a ventilation shaft. We're going to go in there in a little bit. Um, you don't actually have to. If you don't care about... If you're just trying to get through the game, then what you're going to want to do is come over here. Uh, let me just off this guy real quick. You're going to come over here and take a right at this corner, take a left, and you'll find this swipe card. Now, this swipe card takes the Strawhov low access pass, okay? For some reason, I think that's a bug. I believe that you needed a different card, or that it was intended to have a different card, because we're about to go get that card. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to get that card, but if you don't care about that, then just go down that hallway and you'll finish this level. Alright, so, now in order to get that card that we necessarily don't need, we're going to come over to this morgue area and open this door, and oh, there's a proto. What are we got? What's going to happen? Oh, he's just gonna go right by me? What's, what's up with that? Like, why didn't he attack me? But it takes out the guard that's in that ventilation shaft, so let's go in this morgue area now. We don't have to come in here, but I'm just gonna kind of do this to spawn this extra crazy guy, and also any of the other crazy guys that are out here are gonna come and attack me, so... Let's unload on these guys. There's gonna be another one somewhere around here. There he is. Do steady fire, get close to do some damage, and they won't even have a chance to swing. Oh, he did have a chance to swing. Lucky guy. Guess I need to be a little bit quicker at that. Whatever. Alright, so here's a ventilation shaft that you don't necessarily need to go through. Let's crouch and have Curtis go really slow into this shaft. I guess it's not a vent shaft, but it's a little uh, hallway. Now. This is the only way you can go. If you were trying to go up, there's carts blocking your path, so we can only go down. We go all the way down to this section right here. And then we will find some more area that's similar to where we were at. Find this door and open it. Okay, so now we're in this containment area. This was actually in the cutscene in the previous video. This is where the Proto Nephilim got free, or actually two videos ago. And, yeah, we're in this area now. We gotta climb to the top of this area. Alright, there's basically nothing but traversing here. We're not finding any items. We're not really fighting any enemies. We're just kind of trying to make our way around this whole situation. Alright, so here's that door that was shut by that one dude that was... thinks he's a nice guy. <coughs> Pull ourselves up on top of this <coughs> container that used to have the Nephilim, the Proto-Nephilim in it, and then jump over to this platform here, and follow this. We're all like on the third floor of this area now. Follow this all the way around. And then you'll find this, this is an actual ventilation shaft. Let's go into this thing. I kind of want to see what's on the other side there. Turn on your flying mode and go check that out if you want. But this is the proper way to go. We need to go down through this ventilation stuff. Fall down and turn around. Here we go. Now we gotta crouch and go through this ventilation. There's a lot of dead ends in this way. It looks like there's a lot of ways you can go, but there's most of them are dead ends. So I'm just gonna take the right path to get through here. Okay, we got a little uh Cut scene, or a little scene cut, I guess. I don't know what to call that, but... Flip out of here. <coughs> and look, another ladder. More traversing. Not a whole lot of fun, not a whole lot of items. You can tell that like this was sort of an undeveloped section, because they didn't even test that the card was supposed to be a medium access card, and they allowed you to use the low ones, so... Like, all of this is skippable, but you do miss a couple of items. So this is the medium pass, okay? And this is what I believe was meant for that door. Okay, uh, sanitarium medium access path. And there's also a chocolate bar in this room. These guys are probably best friends. They, it's good that they died together. This button on the wall opens a door here, so we go back into... This same area that we were in before, this is actually that morgue area where I released the Proto-Nephilim. 
Um, down this direction over that way is the ventilation shaft we went in before to the right. And now what we want to do is we want to come back over to this card reader and assume we swipe the medium card, but I already sli swiped the low access card. Let's go down. You know, that Proto-Nephilim had his chance. Why didn't he try to attack Curtis a long time ago? He just ran right by him. He's had plenty of opportunity to attack Curtis. Not that Curtis wouldn't have been able to manage it. And there he is. Now, one of the best strategies that I've found is to just take your gun out. The uh, target system is going to be your worst enemy once again, but I found that if I just hold like left and back and just do this circle then he doesn't get any damage off on me like he does when he initially attacks within this entire period right here he doesn't get any hits off on me just continue to fire at him until finally he uh you stop targeting him and then stop firing otherwise you're gonna waste your ammo let's go over here and pick up some large med pack okay there's two items that you can pick up in this area there's barren ammo over here uh if we hurry up we could probably get it before he comes back down he's nowhere near gone so um this fight's kind of weird. Another one of those fights where you're kind of guessing if you're even doing the right thing. You're just like, uh, I guess I'm doing this okay. Trust me, if you shoot him enough, you are doing the right thing. Okay, where is the guy? There he is. Keep on, maybe even hold back and right. Doesn't really matter which direction you... Oh, he, he falls over, but that doesn't mean he's done. If you notice, you can... If you try to run into him, you collide with his... With his, uh, thing. So he's not dead yet. We still have to sit here and wait for this guy. Only took two shots to uh, send him off, though. I can't shoot at him right now, otherwise I would. There's no locking thing or anything, so... Kind of a... <laughs> kind of an uninteresting fight, more like... It's more confusing than it is, uh... Interesting. So any day now, he'll come back down. We basically need to make him fall over about three or four times and then we approach him and we will finally finish him off. Oh, there he is. Point your gun and shoot. Sometimes he doesn't like to shoot when you do it right. So he falls over. Every single time he falls over, you might as well get close just in case he's almost dead, but... Because once he's down, getting close to him is going to trigger a cutscene. And that's how you know you finished him off. Alright, well it looks like one shot was enough to send him on his way. Let's just stand here and be bored while we wait for this animation. See you later, monkey. I think I gotta drop him maybe one or two more times. And then we'll be done here. But honestly, there's nothing else to do in this room. You just stand here and wait for him. Alright, so he fell over, but is he done? If we approach him, nope. I'm still colliding with his body, so not dead yet. Just stand around, walk around, pistol drawn. Eventually, I think this is going to be the one right here. Yeah, I'm falling, I'm going right through him, so if I approach him... So if you remember, in the last video, we found out from Boaz that you need the Periop shards to kill Nephilim. And therefore, that is why we needed to use the Periop shard to kill this Proto-Nephilim. Alright, let's go over here and pull this lever, and this is going to end the level. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Badass Games, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Stick around for the cutscene. Take it easy. Sorry.
that went AWOL at the Louvre. What brings you here from Paris? Eckhart. We have business that only one of us will walk away from. You? Personal reasons. Eckhart plans to use all five obscure paintings to revive an ancient evil called the Sleeper and rebreed the Nephilim race. To do that, he collects alchemically transmuted elements from his murder victims' bodies. I've seen him at work as the Monstrum. With that glove. Eckhart's the original black alchemist. And now he's very close to finding the last painting. Does he know where it is? Yes. It's in the Lux Veritatis vault beneath the straw hole. The paintings must be destroyed. And to do that, I need the shard you picked up at the room. There should be three Periot shards. Eckhart has the last one. If all three shards are united, they can destroy him permanently. So he keeps it safe. Tell me about the shards. They're ancient weapons of the Lux Veritatis. Two of them were entrusted to my father. Eckhart murdered him to stop them passing in my hands. He failed. So Eckhart went after your father, and you want revenge. Justice. We should work together. You're trusting me? Here. How can they be used to kill Eckhart? He must be stabbed with all three shards. We can divide the forces against us if we split up. You need the third shard, so you should go after that. I'll find the last painting and destroy it. Okay. Eckhart guards the shard in his old alchemy lab in the lower regions. I can find my way there. The engraving shows the painting hidden in something called the Vault of Trophies. Here. The entrance is underwater. No problem. How did she get the engraving and the map? It doesn't matter. We have lost too many men tried to open that damn vault. Perhaps her special talents will help us get what we need. The mail will be coming this way soon. Make the preparations. There's no danger she can destroy the last painting. We won't allow her the opportunity. The fifth obscure painting is mine already. And then... 